books and things. But I don't know, let's see if I'm live again. So hopefully the chat can key in. I froze there for a sec, sorry about that. And hopefully we're all good. Yay, live, I see on the chat. All right, so y'all with me? All right, that was Gary Kawana, good friend of mine, playing some tunes. Let's see, uh, I'm just going to go on to chat for a sec. And let's continue on with this piece. we got a lot of ground to cover today. Let's keep an eye on the time. It's 4.06. So that gives me 15 minutes before 4.20. But I'm impatient, and I don't think I can wait. i got to get two smokes in before that. All right, so I'm going to clean my big bag. Push play on the old stereo. Oh. I was having a hard time finding any CDs that weren't skipping. So, we might be tuneless today, we'll see. I've played these Grateful Dead CDs so many times, they're all skipping. My tape player was working, now it's froze. Oh, the technology, eh? Even my tape player's not working. But anyway, my torch is working, my kiln's working. Let me show you another section of this bomb we're putting together. I have been busy. So another thing we can do is basically a wigwag without the wigwags. This is called the beach balls. So I've got four beach ball sections in there, blue, and then I did some yellow and uh, red beach balls. And I spaced them out so that when I slide this inside of here, we'll be able to see the two different colors. So that's the plan. Basically double layering is all about sleeving. When I say sleeving, I mean dropping one piece of glass inside the other and layering it that way. You can also use the puff and stuff technique. I was going to do that today. Maybe we will yet. I don't have that prepped up yet. So we'll see how we go. I definitely prefer the sleeving technique. It's way more uh, precise. The puff and stuff technique, it can blow. You're blowing one bubble into another. And that first bubble can get a little distorted if, if you've got an intense pattern on it. So, uh, yeah, what else? We can talk about who we got for the artist of the day. Unfortunately, I'm not able to be with them and do a collab. He's not that far away. He's only about, a, I think it's about a 12-hour drive. He's in Calgary, and that's Barracuda, my good friend, Barracuda Glass. So uh, he's been blowing glass for about 10 years, and uh, Chris Burak, I believe is his name, but Chris, he's a great guy. He uh, got into glass when his high school sweetheart took a course at Built Shop. And that's a kind of an artsy glass school down in the States. A lot of big name glass blowers have gone through there. Uh, so yeah, Chris has been blowing glass for 10 years. He recently picked up a lathe three years ago. And so he's rocking his lathe pretty good. That's I see mostly predominantly lathe work uh, from the pictures he's posting. <laughs> he does some hand turning as well. He took a class with uh, Merck and J Red. Really helped influence him, taught him a lot of how to use that new tool. You see Barracuda working a lot with John Costick. John Q, I think he also goes by the name of. And uh, he's been teaching a lot of courses now, Barracuda is. Uh, he taught the, uh, he's taught a bunch of guys who are now working in his shop. So he's, he's got a nice little scene going on there in Calgary. Do I know a guy named Brian Newman? I sure do. We'll talk about him in another show. Fucking hilarious guy there. Barracuda, man. He's a funny guy. You might remember him if you've gone to, Bar to the Shambhala Festival. He did the glass blowing on site Shambhala for five years, in a, I think five years in a row. Rocked it there. Uh, from what I hear, uh, I know I, I've gone to Shambhala a couple times. Changed a lot, definitely. Uh, now I know right in the rules they say no glass allowed. So I'm not sure if that pertains to a heady double bubbler or, or what. But anyway, Barracuda is going to be going to the Marcel Braun course on the island. That's what he's most stoked about right now. And uh, he just picked up an old 1937 Litton prototype lathe. And he's hoping to bring in that to the Great Canadian Glass Gathering. Uh, he didn't make it last year at the gathering, I believe, but he was there the year before he brought his beautiful family. So I hope to see uh, Chris Barracuda come out to the glass gathering. It's going to be a lot of fun. And 
you can pick up uh, Barracuda's glass. Let's talk about that. It's always a good way to find his glass. He's on Facebook to contact him directly. He lives in Calgary, so there's two shops in Calgary that carry his work. Grassroots and Hemp Roots. In Kelowna, Hemp City and Mary Jane's. Vancouver's got the Bong Shop and Pup. Ontario, you can find his glass at Liquid Chrome. And there's another store coming up, High Society. I think they're opening in Vernon. So please check out Barracuda's Glass. It's sick. He's got amazing skills. He's electroforming. I really like his percolator actions on his bowls. I've been borrowing his uh, dome style where he flares out the top. I love that. It makes a nice handle. Heck, he does it on the bottom, I believe. Anyway, great guy. I want to promote Barracuda, the artist of the week. We'll get to the head shop for the week after I finish this piece. And after I finish this bag. I better be quick. 420's around the corner. Got some fresh fresh buds picked out for 420. Alright. As my friend Mike Milner would say, get to work! Ho ho! Good friend of mine, Mike Milner, the host of the Great Canadian Glass Gathering. Oh yeah. Alright, so here we got a wig wag just halfway done. I want to make a couple of these yet. This is going to be the bottom of the bong, and I'm going to double layer this up as well. So, I just want to finish what I started, and then we'll get to 420, and then we'll get to layering up a piece. And I got to tell you, this double layering is probably some of the more nerve-wracking work I do. I spent several hours working on each of those pieces, both the sleeve and the insert. Pretty much a full day. Uh, so, here we are live on Pot TV. It better not go wrong. Knock on wood, everybody. So, uh, I'm not real religious, but if you all want to say a prayer or pack your bowls tight for me, we're going to do some fun glass blowing today. I was a little nervous about planning this show. Just, I thought, oh, should I just do some really simple double layers? Just show them how it's done. Or should I fucking go for it? Make a giant piece and do what I like to do. Well, we're going for it. <laughs> yeah, man. Why not, right? You only live once. This is the afterlife right here. We're in it. Enjoy. Every second of it. Alright, so I'm just balling this up. Making it round. I'm gonna reverse the axes on it. So this, I guess, is a refresher course from last week or two weeks ago. Wig wags and whatnots. This is a wig wag ball. It's basically just uh, a bunch of zigzags. I twist and turn the glass back and forth. So just popping a hole, double checking. It's where I want it. It's always nice if you get it in the right spot. So. Now I'm going to put on a handle, look for one that's clean on the end, and everyone remember what these handles are called? The punty! That's right, stolen from the Italians, the puntiel. Alright, so I put on my temporary handle, and now we're going to take this end off. I got some glass to show off to you this week, a couple new pieces I made this week. Collab with a friend of mine, Vagabond Glass. So, there I reverse the axes. Often we call these re balls or reverse balls. So, all I've done, there you can see it used to be this way, now it's this way. I've got it on a 90 degrees. So now all the colors at the end of the ball, see? And this is a fade to clear ball, so all the colors on one end, all the clears on the other. Really fond of the fade to clear stuff. That's a nice effect, and it sure is fucking tricky. The clear behaves one way, color behaves another. Mostly in viscosity. The color is much stiffer. And each color has its own viscosity level too. White's much more creamier than black, for instance. Alright. Let's talk 
talked to a friend of mine, Gibson, this past week. I can expect him coming to visit me in the next couple weeks, so look forward to that. we we'll make some insane collabs. He and I have made some fun fucking shit. Also coming up on the show, I'm looking forward to seeing Tank, my friend Ben, Tank Glass. Hopefully, uh, I might just go up to his shop. We'll see. He lives just up the road from the Great Canadian Glass Gathering for venue. So there we have it fully reversed. Oh, it's got to be almost 420. 416. I got an internal clock, and it's dialed to 420. I saw a discussion online this week that I thought I'd talk about. Well, I just thought of it actually, so I haven't pre-thought this, so let me know what you think in the chat, but there was a couple people talking about how uh, oh, some people in our cannabis uh, community are fairly immature and like sell, oh, who said immature? They said it, not me. And, and people who just put their uh, cannabis smoking in other people's faces and showing off in public and smoking, for instance, I don't know, like three ounce joints or something and whatever, right? And uh, I, I, I don't, I, I'd like to, I'd like to say I don't judge, man. I like, I think these people got a right to rejoice. They found their medicine, uh, you know, that works for them. They're no longer uh, suffering in opiate misery or in pain. And, uh, and if it's not medicine and it's recreational, well, they found, they found their, their drug of choice. And aren't we all adults to pick our drug of choice? Most people pick alcohol. Well, a lot of people. Probably not this audience. But anyway, I just wonder how you all feel about that. I kind of, I don't blame the folks rejoicing and celebrating the cannabis in public. That's what 420 is all about in my mind. It's uh, celebrating how we've got this plant, we've had it for thousands of years. A bunch of dumbasses can't figure out that it's harmless and, and it's a good thing. So it's going to take a bunch of education. And that's what a lot of this is about. Anyway, there's a little speech and a rant while I, while I do the next revolve. How's chat doing? Thanks for joining. I see Rifle in the house. Baker. Hey, Joe Smith. I know Joe Smith. Joe used to do some work up at the gla glass gathering site. He built me a giant diving board, didn't you, Joe? That was fucking funny. Next year, the diving board's gonna be the DJ platform. It wasn't quite complete. When I went up to see it at the one clearing, there's this DJ platform with no railing and a drop off, like, oh man, at least 16 feet to their, to their, to their death. So anyway, we flagged that off. Next year, hopefully it'll be a DJ booth up there. Always a good time at the gathering. Hope they all can join me. We got a new forum up on the website. I wanted to tell you all about that. Oh, I hear 420 in the world. Yeah, it's 419. All right. Luckily, I got a dabber right next to me. And I'm going to hit that right after I ream this hole open. Ream it. All right. So I'm just putting a small hole in this. And I'm going to connect that to another ball. The smaller the hole, the tighter the pattern. So I just keep it small. All right. And let's have a dab. Quick medicine for me. We've got some beautiful, I don't know what I call this, blonde. It's, it's not shatter. It's like, oh, and I drop it. Oh, live on Pot TV. Luckily, I got a nice clean area here to pick it all up. So I'm going to save that dab right there. Off the workbench. Oh fuck! Leave it to me, eh? Hopefully that's not the a sign of things to come of me dropping shit on the show here today. Ha! Well, happy 420. Put together a dab here. It's real crumbly, hard to deal with. Bow, bow, bow. That was hilarious. All right, here's a funny rig. I think I have hit this before on the show. That's a Gibson collab. Gibson and I made this crazy piece. I'm just gonna heat up my nail. 
that before 20 celebrate our medicine, the plant that heals, fragrant cane. Well, that was a baby dad. Tastes good though. All right, hilarious. Good thing I got this uh, dark shatter here. It's pretty good. It's like old plant medicine, that one. Oh, check out my shirt. I wanted to give a shout out to, geez, I gotta remember the name of this company, man. Uh, uh, his name's Dirty Dave, and I'll contact him on Facebook and get his company name so I can tell y'all. But I don't know if you can see that. Plant manager. Dirty Dave's the fellow that bought the free mark bomb. And uh, put 750 bucks towards the cost. Come on in. Got a dog here scratching at the door. And uh, yeah, that money. Uh, and on his request, I asked him if he if he had any uh, opinion on exactly where the money should go. And straight to Jody. Jody's going to uh, help Mark with the uh, the cost of uh, fighting legalization and the cost of clothing the guy while he's in jail and everything else there. So hopefully uh, we'll get that cash to her pocket real soon. But shout out to Dirty Dave, man. This is an awesome shirt. Love it. All right. Well, greetings, Chad. What did I see? You got some folks in, uh, yeah, drug abuse. I know, man. I'll recover that. It's right here. It's right in front of me. I can see it. Anyway, I'm going to pack up a bowl, too, because that was a baby dad. and just wasn't doing it. He's in the freezer. Oh, the goat. Oh, y'all want to see the goat. Let's go mobile for a sec. Rifle's got the inside scoop because I was showing him the other day. I had it hanging in my shop. I've been working in the meat locker all week. Here's our goat, Maximus. Maximus Sperma Fertilitida. So that's going in the... He's out to chill right now. The temperature is perfect out there. Gives me a bit more room in the shop. Good organic meat right there. And, uh, yeah, we've got the, the, the hide right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little dark right here. But we're salting and stretching the hide. And the feature of the show, oh, Maximus is scrotum. I might have to make a mean man purse out of that. We'll see. As long as it doesn't have the, the funky smell, I'm down. I don't need a funky, smelly man purse, but <laughs> pretty fun. So I'm going to hit some train wreck here as I get to work. I think we're going to go ahead and, and layer on a piece here pretty soon. We'll start with the, uh, we'll see. We'll start with the beach balls, I think. Work our way up. Calm my nerves. I'm a little nervous about this process on live TV. But hey, pack the ball, say a prayer. Hopefully it all goes well. And if it doesn't, I had fun doing it. It's not the end of the world. Every time I build something, I learn something new. And this piece isn't an exception. I definitely learned a few things on this piece. Just reminders mostly on on uh, unlayering and assembling a piece. So I'll put one out now and I'll give you a quick show and then we gotta get to it pretty quick. I want it to, uh, I don't want it to cool down too much once it's out of the kiln. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Double layer, double double please. Let's try the beach ball section first. I'm gonna wipe off all the dust, make sure there's no dust being captured here. Alright, and I think I wanna a blow holes and swivel on this side. Might as well put a plug on this side. I think I'm going to remove this handle. <coughs> All right. So, I'm just going to slide this nice and easy. All the way to the end. To there. And now I'm going to heat up this end. And I'm going to seal it off. Not seal it off, I'm going to tag it. Don't want it sealed, the air is going to come out from there. So I do have my, I realize my glows and swivels on the other wrong side here. I don't think I'll need it for this process actually. All right, I guess I'm thinking to myself, talking to myself, figuring it out as we go. I'm going to 
and remove my hose as well. Here we go. So I'm going to remove this blow tube on my right, and we'll replace that with a nice solid handle. Alright, this is probably going to take a little while, so I hope you're comfortable. Roll up another smoke, get a comfortable chair. I foresee this being at least a 20 minute heat down. And, uh, yeah, I'm, ta I'm thinking about doing some uh, pre recorded pieces and, and showing you that as well, and that way I can speed it up a bit. Uh, in the meantime, well, it's challenging and fun to do a live blast blowing show, so fuck it, let's do it. Here we are. So I'm just marvering it down with my paddle, pressing the two layers together. And all we're going to do is heat it from one end to the other, removing the air as we go. And a small air trap, not the end of the world, but I want to avoid any large ones. If I get a large air trap, I'll have to open it up and, and remove the air, which is no fucking uh, fun. No fun! Alright, so, here we go. More heat. I was hoping my new torch would be here today. Didn't make it in time for the show. I got a bigger torch ordered, the Delta Mag. It's supposed to be here Monday, so I'll have it here for next week. It's a beast. that's in there after the fact. Anyway, no big deal. When there's a plug in there and I'm heating it up, the glass tends to expand itself. And it just, uh, it behaves differently when it's sealed. It expands with the heat and can blow itself up into a giant bubble. It's pretty hilarious when you, when you do that. Let's see if I can squint over and see the uh, five-hour show. Let's hope not. But hey, I got no plans. I got a Kano next to me and a, a few cold beers around. Might be a two-hour show. We'll see how y'all feel about it. Last week's show sure was short. We had a borrowing the internet signal off the neighbor, and it was unreliable. And also we had uh, just kind of lack of preparedness, I got to admit. I could have done better. But Dave and I didn't really know uh, if we should build something or what to build or how to build. And the prep work I brought was all cracked up. I brought some, uh, I'll show it to you in a sec actually. It's on top of the kill. My, one of my first uh, salt carving type pieces. That yeah, worked out pretty good, but this one here cracked because of the Amazon bronze color that we used. Every color is different. Likes a different atmosphere. Likes a different torching atmosphere is what I'm trying to say. And Amazon bronze definitely likes an oxidized atmosphere. So that needs a lot of oxygen in your flame. Alright, so we're just slowly working our way over to the right. Now what I can do to help keep warm over there so it doesn't crack too much is put my piece on an angle there using the reflective heat to warm up my piece. And I'm basically just doing uh, maybe a half inch at a time here. And just marvel it over. So far so good. Looking good. Happy. Y'all must be smoking and praying for me. All those smoke signals are working. Thank you. 
that or I actually got a bit of skill and I'm not just fucking all talk, eh? Ha <laughs> ha! We'll see by the end of the show. Alright. Keep on going. It's nice and warm. I always like to ask, what are you all smoking out there? What are you hitting? I just hit some blueberry grapefruit, and I got this bud I'm eyeing up. Next on the list is my blueberry sour diesel. Getting a little low on some of these flavors, but I never run out of my blueberry grapefruit, I'll tell you that. I hope your medicine's working good for you. And remember what my good friend Opus always said, I don't know, I'll paraphrase him. Remember the left hand side of the bag is the recreational side. I'm going to check the chat in a minute because I do want to know, what are you smoking today? So we're almost done this sleeve, that didn't take too long. Time warp here in the shop. It's not going to take that long at all. We're almost through it. I don't see any air bubbles. I think I got a real successful sleeve so far. Looking real good. Go nice and slow. So this, I'll show you the drawing too actually in a minute. This I'm thinking is the kind of the top of the it is the, the can itself of the bomb. So it's going to be, I was thinking a beaker bottom bomb, and these beach balls will be at that, the whole sloping side of the beaker. And then I'm planting a clear window right at the water level. I like that so you can see where, the, where your water level's at in your bomb. And then I got, uh, well, that wig whack that I just did at the start of the show. That's going to be for the very bottom of it. This is hot. Let me tell you. My right handle is not very long. It's always a good idea to think about that before you start. And I got to look to my left there. Is this getting too cold? Wouldn't hurt to reheat it a little. I can see that the yellow isn't is still like reddish orange, so I know it's not too cold. But I'll go back and give it a flash. After all this work, I certainly don't want it cracking now. Oh yeah, looking good. It's my girlfriend's birthday next week. I'm gonna make her something fine in the shop for a fine lady. And I also got us tickets for Shane Poison at the orchestra. With the orchestra. He's performing in Kelowna and Penticton. So if you're anywhere near this area, I encourage you to check out my friend Shane Poison, spoken word. We'll be rapping with the fucking orchestra, man. Ah, crazy. Alright, so that is really close to done. Now I got a choice. Do I want to put it back in the kiln or just keep going? I think I'm going to keep going for a little bit. I'm going to have to switch out my handle soon though. It's really short. Yeah, that worked out really well. All the way to the clear here. Very little bubbles. The bubbles aren't the end of the world, but I grew up, uh, I, I started blowing glass in the day where we all always thought bubbles were flaws, so I stick to that. Most of the time. Alright, so I do have a line of bubbles right around the top here, so that's where I'm going to cut it. And let's show you on the camera here. That worked out pretty good. Pretty happy with that. You can see the orangey uh, yellow beach balls are in between the other blue ones. So to cut this, I'll use my diamond shears, and that's just going to crimp it down for me. Six of them. <coughs> 
thirsty work. Cheers, everybody. Mmm, delicious. All right. Gotta keep it warm. Don't forget to keep it warm. Now I'm just gonna crack that off. Didn't quite do where I wanted it to. No big deal. Do it again. I'll just reapply some heat. I'm just creasing it, basically getting a sharp angle into the glass here all the way around. And then with a series of wiggling, I'll pop that off. Like so. That gives me a pretty clean hole at the end to deal with. Clean it up just a bit. Yeah. Very happy about this. Murphy and his dang law did not come into a deck. Success. That was good. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the kiln. All right, one down. <coughs> Got a big sleeve to go. I pack my volcano here. I'm going to show you what the uh, sketch of the piece looks like. Show you what I'm building. And let's see. This is the bud I was talking about. Been waiting to smoke this one. Oh yeah, the top cola. Yeah, and chat's busy talking about medical marijuana. Glad to see the conversation happening. Don't forget to take the conversation to the to our friends that aren't chronic. You know, it's we're always preaching to the choir, talking to each other about how good cannabis is. We know that. We got to convince the rest of the population, particularly your parents and your grandparents, the older generation. Anyway. Not no shop assistant today, I'm on my own, so I'm like this stuff, eh? Packing my own candle bags here. Alrighty, my bag. I'll have to scroll up the chat now, I didn't get to see what you're all smoking. Oh well. I gotta clean my, uh, Bag's getting pretty sticky, but I'm just gonna empty the still paper from the last round. Get rocking. And let me show you the sketch we're doing. And I got some glass to show you too. We'll take this opportunity to do that. That's my sketch. That's what we're building. I don't know if you can see that or not. So the top here is a tribal stack, double layered, with the blue over the yellow. Beach balls here, one over top of each other. A clear section, and then the bottom, I'm thinking uh, if I stack two wigwags uh, together of the blue, there will be a clear window in the middle. And if I do a spiral in one direction, that will look real sharp in the middle of that window. Which reminds me, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, to Jason Lee, uh, amazing artist in the States and definitely an influence uh, on the wigwag patterns. Uh, his, his technique of stacking balls is just out of this world. Uh, he definitely, uh, uh, I don't know, not trademark, but uh, uh, led the way in a lot of these designs and uh, his, his uh, staircase pattern is just top notch. Top notch. I thought of, I thought of showing you some of that. I actually uh, contacted him to see if he wanted to guest on the show, but it's a little short notice, so he said that he'll join us another time. So stoked to get into uh, featuring some American artists. And uh, for now, we got enough Canadians that need to be talked about. We'll go through that, and and then by the time the spring and summer hits around, I'll be a little more mobile. Looking forward to doing some uh, collabs on the road. I got word from my mechanic that my 1960 Mercury short bus was mobile on its own power. First time in, I don't know how long, uh, at least 10 years that I've owned it. And uh, funny story, this is a real cool hippie bus. And uh, at least eight months after I've owned it, 
uh, I have a picture of it on Facebook there, and a friend of all of ours, Chris Bennett, posted on there, hey, that's my old school bus. So that's pretty cool. We've got Chris Bennett's old bus. He used to live in it in Tofino. And uh, if you don't know who Chris Bennett is, look him up on YouTube. He's got some great research, some great talks, and uh, I love what he's got to say. Can of Blossom, the, the fragrant cane uh, that, that if Jesus was there, he was using and as a sacrament to the people. Pretty interesting research. Anyway, gone to takes you on the tangents, eh? We talked about everything on this show. Let me show you some double layering over here. I'll just slide the camera over. This piece just came back to me. It's not broken. I'm going to make a matching uh, bobbler for it. Uh, this is a piece that I made just before I went to the uh, Treating Yourself Expo last year. Uh, and if you look on my Facebook page, I did a whole set of these called May the Month of Minis. Uh, this one's kind of got a delft blue look to it, the Dutch blue. And uh, I'll try and hold it steady enough. The amount of work in this piece is just fucking insane. I got to tell you. The inside is fully worked. The outside's fully worked. Uh, and again, with uh, Jason Lee influence patterning, I stacked some balls sideways and this way. Again, sideways here. The bottom's got a crazy bitch window. So, and then we got the bowl, all with the three opals in the horn. Really happy. This is a piece I made last year. Stoked. That's that's what we call double layer. Very sick piece. And that's the piece that you saw when you when you went to click on opening the show. And uh, I also made it with the uh, drop down. Oh, what am I doing here? Drop down for the oil. And then you're done. So, nice little piece. And just to, I got big hands. Maybe you can't see the scale. I'm going to show you how big this piece is. We'll put the, as always, used uh, Bic lighter for scale. And it's just about one inch taller than a Bic lighter. Crazy shit, eh? Anyway, that's a fun piece. Looking forward to making a matching bubbler. Appreciate the support, the fellow that bought that. And here's a piece I made uh, with Vagabond. Spin this way again. So this is a salt influence piece. And you can see the carved up face. Vagabond does a lot of zombie faces, a lot of uh, monsters, he calls them. This has a nice perk section in there. And uh, again, it's a dome and a nail. Direct inject, we call that style, when it's the male on top of the bubbler going straight into the downspout. And that, I made the top of that kind of chicken leg look. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Let's see what else I made this week. I had a fun week. I made this little uh, sweet bomb. It's got the dome on there right now with the nail connector. And that can be replaced with the flower bowl. I did a nice little disc on the side of that. Nice handle. Something different. And these are all wig wag stacks. Got a nice constriction in here for the water splash. And a nice window at the bottom. I'm a fan of these patterns. I like doing the wig wags and the that design. Yeah, that's got a teal blizzard down the middle. And uh, forest green. And uh, I believe it's periwinkle. And then unobtainium around the outside of that. So it's got some sparkle to it. We also got this uh, beautiful beaker I made. I'm really happy with this piece. I think it's got a real elegant look. Again, there's the dome connection. Oh, careful. And that's got a little reverse ball there. Removable downscope. Look at the colors of this, eh? Isn't that hot? And that's a, uh, what was that? Uh, striking color. Oh, I wanted to show you. Look at the base of this block. I'll take the inner tip. We call this bipolar, where the one color on the bottom, and if you look on the inside, it's a different color. And what's happened here is all of the uh, all of the silver is kind of accumulated to one side. Just the weight of it, really. Let's check, check. I've got a six-month wait list. Yeah, it's it's pretty long. I'd say a little less than six months right now. And uh, oh, there's there you go. Someone's linked up my site. I appreciate that. Someone's watching the uh, 
what's in the chat for me. That's good. Yeah, I got a bit of a wait list now, but you can always contact me and let me know what you want. I'll let you know how long it'll take. Probably a couple months. Maybe more. Ah. All right. So we got another sleeve to do. Another epic sleeve. It's quarter to five. I'm gonna go for it. I feel good. I feel real good. This sour diesel blueberry is very nice. Big fan of the sour diesel. One of my best crops was the sour diesel. I like to say it has a five acre smell. You need five acres to grow that one. Got me in a bit of trouble that one did. Can't take it out of the house, it smells so much. Wow, good to the last drop. All right, let's check this out. All right. Well, should we do it? This is the one I'm most nervous about. I got to admit. All right, do I feel psyched up? Here we go. Should be all right. It's pretty long, as you can see. So, and that's why I called the show the Large Double Double. So it's important that we line this up, right? Slide it in, and I want as much of the color to show as possible. Oh, that is sick. <laughs> oh, that's gonna look good. Here we go. I don't know who's got this piece yet. So six month waiting list, whatever. When the mood strikes me, I make something. So uh, I know I got a friend and a colleague in the community that's the Canadian rep for La Fumo. Are you in the chat today, La Fumo? I don't know if he is, I should have looked. Anyway, he's got an order for a, a really nice Eddie with me. So we'll see if, uh, we'll see if this is his piece or not. Okay, I'm just making sure my alignment's good. I'm happy about that. I think it looks good. So far, we'll see. Ha! Ah, that's kind of the fun part about glass blowing. Uh, you just never know. It's gonna work out. It's also the fucking stressful part of glass blowing. Anyway, I got an inch buffer at the top here, so if I trap any bubbles at the beginning, it's no big deal. <clears throat> I might need my bench roller too. This one's this one's fucking huge. So same as last time. Just gonna melt this down. Remove the air from it. A little bit more torch. Missing the music. That's what's different about when y'all join me. I usually got uh, music going off in the background. I'll have to figure out how I'll uh, how I can do that. That's why it's nice to have a shop assistant or friend over. Just getting a hand already. And here we go. What else did I want to talk about today? It's nice with this technique, I don't have the blow hose and swivel in my mouth, so I'm able to talk. I 
wanted to mention uh, the MMAR Coalition Against Repeal. We're still looking to raise money for our legal defense fund, which will allow growers to keep growing their own medicine. And uh, I don't know if you realize how key that is for our cannabis community, but I know I certainly hope that we get enough funding. And the one thing I wanted to add to my usual promotion to these guys is they now have a spot on their website, the NNAR Coalition Against Repeal website, where if you are a grower, a grower uh, uh, MMAR patient, and you're involved with the privacy suit that's coming up, there's a spot there where you can now pledge a percentage of your winnings from that lawsuit towards the legal fund, uh, towards the funding of the other, the other lawsuit, the uh, against repeal lawsuit. So that's kind of new, and, and I, if any of you are growers, I encourage you to Fill out your pledge. That's how we will get it done. I plan on making another bong for auction. Oh, that's also what I want to relate it. Victoria's got a uh, fundraiser coming up. So if you live on Vancouver Island, or if you don't, go over to Vancouver Island. If they got a, a benefit coming up, contact Ted Smith for details. So, we're just squeezing the air out, slowly but surely. Who is Shirley and why is she squeezing out air on my show? Oh man. Star? The dog's just going in circles. Want to get at that goat. I've been feeding her a lot of the uh, a lot of the off trim and such. Got a few chickens in the freezer now and a goat processed. We're looking for baby animals in April. Our goats will have baby kids in April. That'll be cool having those guys on the show. Old McRedbeard had a farm. So far, so good. No bubbles in it yet. No cracking. It looks like I'm almost halfway done. That doesn't take too long. Oh man, you know what I'm seeing? I didn't anticipate. And I hope it's not the truth. Is the, uh, my propane is running out. Maybe. And if that's the case, it is. I can see it slowly going down. Motherfucker. So I've got to do the world's fastest propane switch on the fly. i got another torch next to me. I think I'll just hop over to the Red Max. Fuck around. Murphy's Law! Coming at me! Motherfucker. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm running out of, ox uh, out of propane. i got an extra tank. And I meant to hook up the full tank before the show, but I did not. Well, let's see how far I can get. Well, it's definitely running out. All right, well, gotta move some stuff here. Oh, yeah, move the camera with me, live on Pot TV. Running out of gas. So I'm just moving these bongs. Case is flammable. Oh, it's hooked up to Rich's Rick's uh, oxy. <laughs> yeah, no problems, eh? Can you see me? Ha ha ha! We did it! We got it in there! So, uh, I'll adjust the camera angle now. I'm on, uh, 
my shop mate's torch. Turn this one off. Yeah, so just cutting through the hurdles, no big deal. I'm gonna have to sit down for this business. There we go, no problem. Except I don't have a marble pad. Fuck around. Woo! That's hot. I've been rolling molten glass on it for a while. It's probably hot. Okay, I can probably get through this now. And then I will uh, put it in the kiln and we'll hook my new propane tank up. I should have trained my uh, kids for this job yet already. I yell at my kids to get down here and switch my propane tank. Anyway, sure I'm happy to have uh, Rick working in the shop <laughs> for a moment like that. I haven't worked on a Red Max in a long time. It's actually a great torch. I used one for, oh man, long time. Long time. Probably, uh, oh, at least five years. No, maybe less. Yeah, yeah, about five years. And they're affordable get in on a new Red Max at like 700 bucks compared to the well, almost 2000 for the nut torch. The new torch I got coming, man, I could have bought myself a fucking car. But good tools cost money. Alright, well, I hope that you can see what I'm doing. I, I'm unable to check the chat right now, so hang in there, folks. A little bit of excitement here. Running out of gas in the middle of a huge fucking sleeve. The show must go on. We're live. Fuck TV. Almost there. It's getting heavy, I gotta admit. My arms are getting tired. pounds of uh, glass here in front of me. What I would say it's a great success. Great success. A strong like old country. Red Beard prevail. Yes. Red Beard crazy, but Red Beard prevail. Yes. Oh yeah. Last inch is always the hardest. Oh, I'm sure you'll find a joke in there somewhere. And this inch is the hardest. So you got a little bit of a good shape to it, eh? Can you see that? So far, so good. I see one line of bubbles there, but in my mind it's at a spot where if it was, if the bubbles are so big I don't love them, I will remove the top of that piece right there and call that a, where I put the joint to the next section. Should be alright though. No? Oh yeah. Oh, I see that we're not frozen at least. Everyone's still with me. Man, the man. It's all out of fucking sleep. Yeah. Large double double, please. Alright. I'll show you what I got here. And you can see underneath is the yellow, on the top is the blue. Here's the bubbles I was talking about. We'll see if they can come out or. They kind of migrate around a little bit. Sometimes they'll just ball up into one spot and you can remove it from there or deal with it. So I'll determine that in a bit. Right now I just want to finish off the end here so I can put it in the kiln. Give my shoulders a break. Have another smoke. 
Have we talked about the head shop for the week yet? I don't think we have. Talk about that now. And this is uh, an example of a shop that currently I don't deal with yet. As local as they are to me. They've got a few of my pieces uh, from other people apparently. But uh, yeah, I haven't dealt with them yet. And that shop is Hemp City in Kelowna. Uh, Barracuda picked the head shop of the week. He's worked with Hemp Head City for a long time now. Uh, seven years, he told me. Alright, I did it again on fucking live TV. So what I did, I'm going to, here on this show, I'm going to admit when I do something wrong right away. I sealed off the tube. I shouldn't have done that. So I'm just going to grab my tool and cut it open. There we go. This was a solid handle. Whoops. Anyway, we're good now. And I think I'm just going to set it in the film. Now we've got these. This is heavy, folks. i got to tell you, this is really heavy. Now we got all this fantastic glass. that I'm going to... All this will be the bowl right up to here. And that's the top. Oh... Well, that worked all right for a big hurdle in the way. I'm going to right away switch my propane tank, check the chat, see what time it is. Five o'clock, so that's a one hour show so far. And, uh, well, what do you guys think? Let the chat vote while I uh, go change my propane. If y'all are sick of me, let me know. Hang up now. I think I'm going to go for a little bit more. So. <laughs> Uh, multitask. Fill the candle bag at the same time. <coughs> right on, well, it's going really well. So, yeah, Hemp City and Kelowna, they got two locations. Head shop of the week. And they, uh, recently Barracuda's given them some lessons. So the two guys there, Lee and, uh, what's the other guy's name? Lee and Clay are both turning some glass, so which is really cool. When you go into a head shop like that, they already know what you're talking about, what you might need. Maybe they got some small pipes they're making now, I'm not sure. I'm you know, just going to change my propane out here. Be right with them. I know what I can do. See if I can get another song by the. Uh... There you go.
How's that? Silver. I'm going to 
you in this business? Make sure this rod's good and hot first. Yeah. Are they all having a good time? How's everyone doing? Fun to see Gibson joining me in the chat. Gibson's on Quadra Island area. Order his glass if you can. Ask for it at your nearest head shop. I hope you're all fucking high right now. So here we go. Gonna just fume some silver. So that's just basically pure silver on the end of my rod. And I'm just gonna fume it. I'm wiggling it back and forth. It just kinda, kinda activates the silver more. I don't know why. I don't have that shaky hands, to be honest, that, not right now. So we're just going to fume it. You can probably see it coming off there. And now it looks like that. I got another piece of this big rod. Where are you? Maybe I'll lay down some. I think I want a big piece. That's a big horn. I don't know why it's going that big. Well, I had all this organized ahead of time, and now I can't see it. Let's have a good look before I give up. Aha! Ta da! The old armpit swipe. Every glass blower's cleaning trick, I tell ya. Alright, so I can see now this is a little short. So I think I'll weld a piece on to the end, like this. And that's what I'll use to actually roll down on the piece. So, I guess uh, the other job I gotta do is uh, that wig wag and double layer. And actually, since the show's a double layer, maybe we should fucking do that, eh? You see me do one of these horns. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set this down, we'll grab up that piece and we'll finish that. That's a little bit more exciting. With this, I am going to draw some seriously fat, clear lines down this fumed, big-ass, cock-sized rod. Another side, great, big, clear line. I'll probably just do two of them, making a sandwich on both sides with the fume in the middle. Then I'm going to heat the fuck out of it and twist it up. And then I'm going to make it into one big horn shape, nicely tapered. It's really important to taper them nice and even. So, I think that's a great idea. I've done that before. I think that was covered on show number two. Here's something that we, I do a lot of. So I'm just going to wake back this ball up. I think after that, we'll see how far we get. i got to spiral another one, and then we'll double layer that. And then we'll call it a day. Let's see what else. I made a couple show notes. Let's see if there's anything I got to talk about while we're... While we're uh, spinning away here. Oh, I did cover it all. Shout out to Barracuda, the artist of the week. The guy's hilarious. And a good glass blower. A good family man. Check out his glass. And the head shop of the week in Kelowna, Hemp City. Good guys. Lee. That's who you want to talk to, I think. Anyway, here I got that thing in my mouth and I don't even have the other end in the pipe yet. So, let's do that. Plug it in, plug it in. We're golden. Alright, I'm pretty happy uh, with the uh, way that turned out. In fact, uh, what I'll do after this piece, maybe I'll ball that, that beach ball piece right up. That's a lot of fun. That'll be some big heat. I'm going to make a ball. It doesn't sound exciting, but it's a lot of work. I'm going to heat that whole thing up and gather it into one ball. And for those of you curious, this ball will probably retail for, oh, definitely over a thousand bucks now. The retail way, yeah? Roughly, anyway. So, not for the faint of art, or the slender of wallet. When I put four days into a piece. Oh, 
Oh, so look, I was doing uh, the last few things I did before I uh, did this was beach ball. So I just started doing a beach ball. Eh, wrong. It's not a beach ball. It's supposed to be a wig wagon. I'll well, just punch you on that again. Pull it out. And I'll show you one more time how to do a wig wag ball. Pretty straightforward design. Let's keep the whole thing up here. So I had a couple of funny comments on uh, the other videos I posted up to YouTube with this show. Uh, I need a better camera. Well, that's in the works. I do have a, a webcam over here I'll try. I just got to admit I'm a little technically challenged with that type of business. So hopefully I'll get someone out here to help me soon. And, Bring up a little better system if you think I need it. But right now it's working. And you got what you got. And I think it's pretty good. I'm having fun. So I'm just drawing this out nice and straight. No twists, no turns, no wigs, no wags. Not yet. And we'll turn this first one into a spiral. Oh, oh, my blow tube's getting pretty thin there. I think I'll have to replace that. That happens a lot. See how narrow it is right there? That happens a lot because the, uh, like I said earlier, the clear glass is less viscous. It flows like water compared to the color. I'll just pull that off and we'll slap another one on. There we go. Get to the other side. Thirsty work down here, I tell you. Thirsty work. Give me a drink. Give me a cold drink. I got a show from a, a reggae band that wants to come to the Great Canadian Glass Gathering. That might be fun. You guys know of anyone that wants to play music? Maybe we'll build a little stage, a little jam. Pretty stoked about that. Milner's got baby goats right now. Excited about the gathering. So, just wigwagging this up. One more. Anyway, I did two days of prep work. Uh, to get to this point where I'm at right now, trying to make it so I could actually finish a fucking bong on the show. And I still don't think we're going to be able to do that today. I see, uh, I see another hour anyway of getting this ready for the sleeving. For you glass blowers out there, I'll give you a couple tips in a minute on how I do the sleeving. Getting ready for it. necessary to put a clear tube on the end of your insert and on the end of your sleeve just to give it some uh, some buffer room at the beginning of your sleeve and at the end. So I always add a bit of clear on to both sides and I think uh, I think that's pretty key to save all your pattern. Alright so 
halfway done this ball. Just tidy up the one end. Just give me a close up again. So all we're doing all this time is wigwagging these balls. I'm putting a series of zigzags. I spiral one end this way, spiral another that way. I'm thinking of teaching a course. I saw someone on the chat saying they'd love to learn. And uh, I'm thinking of holding a course. I'm not sure where. Maybe a shop in Vancouver. Maybe do a total beginner's course. That's one of my goals for my farm here is to have a spare school bus for someone to stay in. Get the full experience. Kind of my dream. So this blows air into the piece, expanding it whenever I need to. So, just ball it up. See how all the colors on one side, all the clears on the other? I'll pop a hole on the clear side now. It feels like episode four all over again, with wags and whatnots. I do do a lot of wigwags. It's a pretty time intense pattern. Not a lot of blowers are doing it. it takes a long time, a lot of energy. I guess a lot of blowers are still doing it, but not as much now as it was uh, five years ago, I'd say. I'd say the sculpting of characters and figures is definitely the hit right now. We're going to cover that on a future episode. The zombies, the monsters, the carving. We're going to do uh, the bunnies and the, and the characters, the character bombs. Actually, I think I'll use that one. It's a natural good time to call it quits and and uh, call the show a day. I'm going to attach this re-ball to this re-ball. Let me show you what I got. We'll lead you through the whole pipe. We'll give you another view of the ball. And then I'm going to sign off because I do believe I've got another hour here. So I still got this. I'm going to attach to this. And then I'm going to open it up. And like I told the other glass blowers. I'm going to add a clear section onto the end of this. This is my outer sleeve. And then I'm going to slide in this piece, which I'm going to spiral it around. And that will double layer that. Now let's take a look at what we've got here so far. We've got this giant double window beach ball. This is going to be the base. This is going to be the top. Let's get a nice zoom in here. Wow, eh? Intense. Put it all together. And this will be a balled up long bottom with that window is going to be in the very bottom right here. That clear level will be the water level. And that's what we got. It's looking pretty great. I'll show it off next week on the show and see who the proud new owner might be. In the meantime, be safe, puff tough, and I'll catch you all later. Thanks for watching.